Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back to episode four. And we're going to continue on with example 4.1, which is the heat exchange. If you recall, in episode 3, we looked at the internal pressure. Now we're going to look at the external pressure on, on a cylinder. And so let, let's, uh, let's keep working here. So we're going, to, we're going to only get to a level 1 type uh, assessment. And um, so let's jump right in. Let's just quickly review our scope. So we have an internal corrosion on a cylindrical shell of a heat exchanger and was found during inspection. So we want to con confirm whether it's con uh, okay for continued service. We've just determined that the internal pressure is okay, but we need to check for the external pressure because exchangers often have a full vacuum design requirement. Okay, so we're going to perform an external pressure evaluation. External pressure, we have, uh, we can use Annex A4 of 2007, and we have the options of following the option one, the original construction code, or we can use ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code, code case 22861. Now, they also remind us before we begin that there's also buckling that can occur when you have a vacuum condition. So there's also uh, buckling calculations to consider. And th these are based upon linear stability theory as found in WRC 406. And they, they use reduction factors that consider imperfections in the materials, boundary conditions, nonlinearity of material properties, which is, you know, very complex type of work, and consider residual stresses in the material. Now the applicability of the equations is based upon the the two these two geometric relationships where the thickness has to be greater than five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch and the d over t ratio has to be less than two thousand so there's a few more things following the geometric relationships let's continue this so for unstiffened cylinders with uniform heads we can assume that it's axisymmetric and uniform stress just by looking at the shape. We can also look at the stiffening of cylinders and cones, assuming a uniform thickness between the stiffeners. There is an assumption about nozzles with reinforcement. Assume that the thinnest uniform section of uh, for stiffening and unstiffened sections. Another thing we have to look about, it's, it's creep, the phenomenon of creep, and there are limitations shown in table A2. Because, so because we are sitting with Section 8 Division 1, we have to look at UCS 23-1. And when we do, we find that uh, our temperature limitation is up to 425 degrees up centigrade or 800 Fahrenheit. is we're going to look at the initials assumed initial thickness t and that's based upon a calculated thickness based upon the internal pressure that's where we would start so we've got 10.067 or of inches or 247.9 so that's the shell and the tube to tube sheet distance this is the unsupported length is 60 inches or 15 24 millimeters
So now we're ready to do our math to determine our buckling stress. So we've, we previous slides, we looked at all these geometry relationships and we continue, we determine the outside radius is 10.0, 10.2. And then we need this value DO, which is double the radius and is 20.3. And then once, once we're done with that, we know our unsupported length, we know our radius, and then we can calculate our MX. So from equation 177. Now there is a few different scenarios here to calculate CH. So you have to go ahead and look at all these different conditions like, you know, MX, is it greater than this relationship and so on. So, I mean, it's easy enough to set up on a spreadsheet, but uh, in our case, our relationship falls to 179 and we determined CH to be 0 0.038, okay? So basically when we use that, we put this into the final equation, we got our CH, we put that at the, at the, at the, uh, the top and the numerator, and then we know our thickness, we know for our elastic modulus from the, the earlier slides, we determine D, up here, and then we calculate 23.949 PSIG or, or 165 megapascals. Another step here, which is calculating the predicted, predicted inelastic buckling stress. And we have a number of relationships here, depending on, you know, different relationships of FEH over SY, the yields strength. And we have to look at each of these cases. And in our example, we found that 1A3 applied because it met this criteria and we come up with 112. So then we go back in and we determine our inelastic buckling stress to be 112 you know, megapascals or 16.264 PSI. Now we've determined our service factors in service margins. And we look at these relationships again, and we've figured out what our FI, C is and FY and we determined that 164 is applicable so therefore we get 1.87 and then there's some questions about earthquake and design load combinations those are called called the supplemental loads per section a set to seven and in our case it's not required and um in, in this particular example but it often is and then we look at the in-service margin of being at the end of the day of 1.87. So we finish up here by just looking, making a final adjustment on that. And because we had this, this safety factor, we are allowable stress now drops to 8,662 or 59 megapascals. Our pressure is only 676 PSIG, that's our allowable external pressure, right? And, and so it's very small compared to what's allowable. So uh, is PA greater than the vacuum pressure? And of course it is, so we pass. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. 